Hey everybody, and welcome to Let's Play Avernum 3 Ruined World. Or welcome back, I guess, if you've been watching my series on the first two games. And or uh, on the Avedon games by the same developer. Um, yeah, welcome all of you. Uh, I'm super excited to get back into the series and, uh, and you know, playing with this engine. Uh, it's been just long enough so that I'm getting a little bit... Um, hazy on the details, uh, story-wise, but um, other than a general continuation of the overall storyline, um, the first and the second game didn't really have that much in common, so I'm completely uh, expecting to start over with a fresh party, possibly years after the second game, so uh, that shouldn't matter too much. Um, yeah, I'm going in this, into this completely blind. I've never even looked at the, at the uh, title screen here. Which once again looks pretty nice. Maybe not not quite as as amazing as uh, the artwork for the second game. But um, well, uh, in terms of what is what we can see here, though, it's pretty exciting. I mean, uh, I was almost almost going to say that it looks pretty idyllic. I mean, other than obviously uh, fires raging and um, threatening to destroy this quaint little harbor town. Uh, but the big thing is that this is apparently, or I should say pretty much obviously, on the actual surface of the world, which uh, actually took me by surprise when I realized that. Uh, I hadn't really thought about it, but uh, for whatever reason, I, I just assumed that all the games would uh, take place entirely underground. You know, I mean, they're, they are still named Avernum, after all, and Avernum is uh, the subterranean kingdom, or a subterranean realm inhabited by a former... Uh, enemies of the Empire, the Surface Empire, and of course other native subterranean races like the Slytherikai and... well the Nephilim might not have been... were they, were they actually uh, subterranean to begin with or were they also just banished down there? Well, I don't know. And then of course there are the Vanatai who we formed an alliance with last game. Um, spoilers I guess. Uh, we also did defeat... well, we didn't defeat the Evil Empire, uh, although it pretty much felt like it, but the, the game outright told us that the war would pr probably be going on. Uh, the Empire's forces were just so vast that uh, even our significant victories would not be enough to completely stop their assault, but hopefully slow it down. And it seems like we're, we might be getting to carry the, the fight all the way to the surface. Um, yeah, well, okay, without much further ado, um, let's jump into a new game. Uh, welcome to Avernum 3. Uh, okay, yep, Wandering Adventurers. Strange people, fighting monsters, trying to survive, uh-huh, mm -hmm. Right, uh, looks like we have the same, yeah, the same three races as before. And I'm going to go with, uh, a healthy mix again. And by healthy mix, I mean two humans and two non-humans. Um, but this is going to take me a while, as as always. So I'm going to uh, pause recording and come up with a party composition. I am going to maybe try something new. Well, I'm going to make all all four characters uh, all four characters uh, custom. Seems like we'll have. Pretty much the same selection of uh, predetermined characters, but yeah, I mean, the, there's no reason not to just go with custom characters and just configure them exactly the way you want. So we will do that. I have been thinking about maybe making one of my two spellcasters, uh, probably the priest, um, focus on summoning. So basically, a summoner who also does priestly stuff on the side. Um, I really would like to to have a a full-on ranged ranged fighter. In the second game, unfortunately, my idea of having a hybrid priest and ranger didn't really work out that well. Ultimately, he was a decent enough priest, but um, his his archery just couldn't nearly keep up with uh, with uh, melee damage or uh, spell damage. 
unfortunately. So I, I think I will have a full-on mage once again, because they're just too good not to have. Uh, I, I basically need someone to be able to, you know, someone who's able to carry the group and deal the AoE damage that you will need. Uh, I will also have a full-on fighter, but whether it's going to be a dual wielder or maybe I'm going to go back to a sword and board fighter again, who I didn't have in the previous game. Mm. Well, again, okay, I'm going to pause and I'm going to come up with something, whether or not it's, or whether that's going to be viable, I have no idea. I'm not going to look up, uh, look up any recommended builds or anything, I'll just go with my gut feeling and hopefully we'll be able to to get through the game that way. But it worked out last time, and it, I'm sure it's going to work out somehow. Okay, I'm back with something I think I can live with. Uh, as you might notice, I uh, actually have three non-humans now, and only one human. Um, I really want to want to have a female warrior again. Uh, unfortunately, the selection of portraits is not amazing. The only two that really apply are, well, the one from before, and this one and her outfit just doesn't make any sense. I'm sorry. Uh, if only... I don't know. If only. If only there was a female with, you know, more clothing in this style available. But I guess she'll have to do. I'm gonna go with the name Rasluka. I'm not sure if I've named one of my characters from the previous games that. But that's a female warrior name, well, or a name I've, I've used for female warrior types in the past in other games, so uh, we'll go with that. Uh, we have Kiar, the Neville, who is going to be our archer. So yeah, she's going to be some kind of warrior. I'm not 100% sure yet whether I want to make her a sword and shield user, or I'm probably going to end up having her dual wield, just, you know, because it deals more damage. And uh, focusing on, on pole arms in the previous game felt uh, a little bit underwhelming compared to uh, my dual wielder, so I guess I'm going to go with that. Hopefully she'll be tough enough to tank that way. Um, well, Kiara is going to be... I'm, I'm going to try and make him a pure archer, as pure archer as I can, and see how far we get with that. Um, I can always give him maybe some healing capabilities if it doesn't work out. Uh, although, I don't know. Changing changing uh, specs mid mid game uh, it's probably not going to work out that well. Um, this name might seem familiar. Um, I guess depending on uh, on the backstory that we're going to get as soon as I hit uh, accept here, I might gonna I, I might go with. Well, actually, no, that's not going to make any sense. Uh, well, we'll see. Either he's going to be just another Xaz. Uh Maybe that's just a very popular name among slith of his generation, um, because I actually want to make him the mage of, of the group, so it wouldn't even make sense if he was the same character from the first game, uh, or the second game. Um, maybe he's one of his offspring, or I don't know, depending on how much later this game is, uh, how many years after the second one. Uh, and then we have another slith, because why not? Uh, a slith um, priestess, or I guess shamaness, who is going to be mostly focusing on summoning We'll see how that works. I really have no idea if that's viable at all. Um, I mean, she's she's going to have to do something um, other than summoning anyway. But uh, I'm gonna uh, at least prioritize uh, skills that increase her uh, summon creature's power and whatnot. So ultimately, she's probably gonna be a, uh, a priest who's maybe a little bit more focused on also summoning stuff. But we'll see. So yeah, Thessia sounds like. A slit name. It has th and s in it, so I guess that uh, that works. Right, I'm going to go with hard difficulty again, even though I might I might come to regret this. Ooh, fancy intro. Legends tell that Avernum is the gateway to the underworld, from which the dead never return. Avernum is also a real place. It has many miles of caves and tunnels far below the world's surface. It's true. The Empire rules the surface totally. When they discovered Avernum, they had the perfect use for it. A prison. What is this place? Oh no! Everyone who didn't fit in. The rebels. Oh, I guess I missed something there. The antisocial. 
those with incorrect opinions, they were teleported into Avernum forever. The Evernites built subterranean cities. Let's go. They learned to fight. They studied magic. They built their strength. And when they were ready, they got their revenge. The Archmage Erika made her own teleporter. Emperor Hawthorne ruled the Empire. He was brilliant and ruthless, and utterly despised. What? That's not how that happened. Oh dear. Vladimir? Yes, Garzad? Oh, that's Garzad, right. It is time to deal with Avernum. Yes, Garzad. Hmm. Avernum struck down the Emperor. Four years later, the Empire invaded. Destroy them! Avernum was outgunned and outnumbered. The Empire War was thought lost until Avernum found an ally. The alien Vanatai joined you. Alien? Okay, they already call them aliens. I mean, that is what they look like. Your new allies from the deep underworld turned the tide. The Empire was expelled. Now what, Erika? Now we escape. From the pit. Da -da. Avernum won the Empire War. Five years passed. Nothing was heard from the Empire. Huh. The Evernites decided that it was time to return to the surface. They built a magical portal. And escape, uh, established Upper Avernum. New cities and tunnels just below the surface. Really? Then they selected someone to explore the surface. For the first time, you. All four of you. Huh. Okay, wow. Upper Avernum. Uh, so, wait. Let me get this straight. Um, actually, let me just hit the W key. <gasps> this is... Okay, it seems like a smaller game world, but it is new. Fort Emergence, Portal Fort, New Contra. Huh. Geekra. Erika's tower? Okay, Erika's new tower, unless she just teleported the entire thing up there. New Formello. Wow. Hmm. I wonder if... Uh... Oh, that's where we start, Fort Emergence. Okay. I mean, we'll probably learn soon enough, but I wonder if... Uh... The old Avernum is even part of this game and explorable. I mean, probably not. If I had to guess, then we probably have this and then the actual surface, judging by the intro, uh, the, the title screen. Huh, okay, wow. Um, welcome to Avernum, this is a tutorial to help you to get started. Right, to move around. Uh, your year, year of tedious service in the Evernite army has finally paid off. One year or years? No, has paid off, so one year. You have been chosen on very short notice to join unspecified services and travel to the surface. Okay. Uh, the surface, out in the sun. You had never dared dream of it. Maybe we had actually never dreamed of it. I don't know how, how eager Slits are, even are to go to the surface, but, well, orders are orders. Uh, first, however, you must complete your final training and testing. Happily, some equipment has been left for you. Two crude helms of thick lizard skin. Hmm. Wait for you on the table nearby. You should take advantage of them before you move on. Okay, lizard skin, of course, it's not the same as Slith skin. Uh, I shouldn't be so squeamish about that. Uh, it's not like... Humans don't typically wear clothing made from other mammals. Okay, uh, so uh, the interface looks a bit, a bit modernized, maybe a bit more high res, uh, but is otherwise very much the same. We do have uh, eight freely configurable quick slots, uh, like I think we did in the third, maybe even the second Avadon game. 
but not the second Avernum game, so that's definitely a step up. Um, I will probably end up using most of these for spells and not for items, which is, of course, the great benefit over having four dedicated slots for each. Um, right, just don't hear the helmets. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. I think I know the hotkeys for the most part. Uh, we've got healing po Oh, healing potion looks different. That's That used to be a speed potion before, but... Right, I guess I'll start uh, putting items from the right side and spells, uh, yeah, spells and skills from the left for now. Uh, on the helmet, move that over. So yeah, uh, while an item is in the air, by the way, uh, if I press one now, it's gonna be transported to the first character, and you know, two, three, four work the same way. And then hitting the same number key, uh, while nothing is selected, will actually select that character. So that makes oh. Shouldn't have done that. Um, that makes um, inventory management pretty easy and quick. Uh, have I not moved that over? Wait. Oh, I already equipped that. Derp. Right, uh, so everyone starts with a healing potion. That's fine. Also, I don't know, on my end, these uh, all these sound effects are super loud. But I have already cranked down volume, the volume pretty... Um, pretty far. I think it, it's probably not going to be that bad in recording. Uh, the lizard skin helm is crude and dirty, but it might deflect one of the Empire's weapons. If you're very lucky... Uh, if you're very lucky. You eagerly look at the door to the north. Time for your elite training. <laughs> right. I mean, we are all level 1. Also, I still have all my spell points and skill points and training points to distribute, of course. Uh, let's see, what else can we do? Take a look at this. Go see Anaximander. Anaximander, huh? When you arrived at Fort Emergence, you were told to speak with someone named Anaximander. He is in the fort somewhere. Map to, the, to his location was supposedly left in your room. Was it now? Was it? I mean, assuming that this is my room. Okay, anyway, uh, let's take care of this. Oh boy, points to spend three. Um, well, we definitely want strength. Endurance. Uh, actually, let's see if anything changed. Strength, muscular, damage with melee weapons, hit and damage with melee weapons, right? Uh, wear heavier armor without being encumbered. Okay. Hmm. So much for my plan to maybe give my archer a bit, at least medium armor, so that he can some be somewhat of an off tank. We'll see how that works out. Um, right. Warriors. Warriors and archers are aided by dexterity. Um, increase your chance to hit and damage with missile weapons. Yeah, so we definitely want to focus on this uh, for our archer. Chance of being hit. Uh, well, so I guess um, having better uh, evasion will also help survive on the front lines. Okay, act sooner in combat. Okay, well, sure. Uh, how good you are in thinking things out and solving problems. Uh, increases spell energy, helps to resist charming and other mental magic, right? And endurance is, of course, hit points and um, other resistances. Okay. So I'm pretty sure that's completely unchanged from the previous games. Uh, right. Points to spend here. Um, yeah, I'm going to go with melee weapons, not pole arms. See here, magic. Uh, I think I'm gonna be pretty traditional about this and make the archer also, you know, the dexterity character also the uh, tool user, lock picker. Um, one of my maybe the shaman is gonna be the nat nature lore. Okay, that was renamed from cave lore. I guess that makes sense because. We're not going to be in caves for m most of the game, or at least not for the entirety of the game. Uh, helps you calm hostile monsters, forage for treasure, and resist certain unpleasant magical effects. Right. Luck. Well, we'll see how many points I have left for that. Uh, mage spells, priest spells, arcane lore. Hmm. Right. I mean, I'm assuming that... Oh, wait. 
Ah, yes, okay, of course. Arcane Lore is used to unlock spells for both mages and priests. Right, right. Spellcraft increases effectiveness of all of, us, of, all of my spells, right? So not just attack, resistance, magical efficiency sometimes makes you use less spell energy. Right. So, yeah, it seems like these are pretty much unchanged from what I used what I'm used to. Well, uh, I mean, okay, hardiness, blade master, and let's see here. Do I want repost? Probably, although that's honestly not very useful at all. Hmm, in fact, I think I'm going to go with dual wielding right away. I would like to make use of the shields I'll obviously be finding, but yeah, dual wielding is just so good. And, you know, badass, which is obviously way more important. Improved endurance, nimble fingers, uh, sure, you, hmm, maybe. Oh, actually, hmm, interestingly, you can't pick anything to increase your hit chance to begin with. So that has definitely been changed. Sure aim? No, that's just missile attacks. Uh, sure hand? Yes. So that now requires... Oh, that... Never mind. I could pick that. Oh, okay, I'll pick that next level up. For now, I will think we'll be fine. Endurance by one. Or maximum health by 5%. I mean, right now we have uh, 40 health, so 5% is going to be nothing. Uh, whereas one point of endurance, I think, will give me 5 extra health, right? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, why can I not distribute your points? Because I have to click on this. Okay. So I'm going to basically do the same thing, except with Dexterity instead of Endurance. Um, and you don't need dual wielding, so I can put two points in here if I want to. Gymnastics. Actually, what what is there to make uh, ranged weapons better? I guess Lethal Blow works with both, so we definitely want that. Sniper gives a chance for a bonus shot. That's, not, that's nice. Yeah, so ultimately we want... Um, well, at least these three here. Gymnastics. Well, we definitely want two points in here, because that's going to unlock the better hit chance. That's nice. Uh, sharpshooter makes you more effective. Okay, increases damage by 4%. I think that might, be, that might be increased from what it was before. Maybe to make archery more viable. I might also be wrong. It's it might not be be more than the previous game. Well, we'll unlock these eventually. For now, I'm gonna go with uh, one point in tool use. Right, he already has um, a lot more options. Right, chance start with missile attacks. I mean, hit chance is a bit of a problem early on. It tends to be less so later. In the game, middle fingers, uh, sure aim. Wait, oh, damage with missile attacks. Hmm. I mean, I think I want to go with this one for now. Ah, tough call. I, hit chance might be more of a problem very early on, so let's go with that for now. Let's see, you're going to be the mage, so I guess for now I'm going to put all points into intelligence because, you know, spellcasters shouldn't be uh, in the front lines to begin with. Of course, things don't always go as planned, but, but you know, yeah, I'm not going to focus on resistance. That's something I can dump some points into if I don't know what to do with my points otherwise. Um, mage spell, well, sure, wait, okay, there we go. Improved intelligence, healing focus, elemental focus, energy blessing. <laughs> Mental focus exercises have improved your memory and enabled you to cast more spells without confusion. Uh, 
is that just just uh, flavor text, or is there actually a danger of, or is that can you cast key casting spells once your after your energy is depleted and there's a chance of it confusing you? That would be new. I mean, we want that eventually, but again, with only 60 energy, 5% uh, increase is, uh, what, 3? Yes, 3 extra points. So for now, we would be getting more out of this. And intelligence also increases damage, right? So I think this is probably better for better to max out this completely. Just for the double benefit of increasing um, energy and uh, spell efficiency, and the resistances provided by intelligence. So yeah, I'm okay with that. And for you, well, you're going to be mostly a spellcaster. I have been thinking about maybe making my shaman, uh, you know, a bit of a of a D and D cleric type with medium armor, maybe, um, and uh, one-handed weapon and shield, but I don't know how viable that is. And I don't know. I don't really like making hybrid characters too much. Uh, that's sad. Mm. Now I'm gonna give her all intelligence for now as well. Eventually, I want want to give my mages some weapon skill, probably. But whoops! Not no 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 not this one. This one. Um, some arcane lore is always beneficial for... I want some nature lore, but we can also get that from trainers, actually. I don't necessarily need to invest points in that. So let's go with this for now, and more improved intelligence as well. Okay, uh, maybe I should have done that off-camera, but, you know, it is what it is. Right, uh, I don't have any spells, but you do. Um, Bolt of Fire. Uh, yes? Right, okay. Um, Call Beast. Well, I mean, I suppose. Uh, where do I want Cloak of Curses, actually? Hmm. I mean, it doesn't really matter. Uh, this is something I want to have active. But I don't need to need it uh, ready at you know any moment. So maybe I'll put it here. I don't need to have that at, uh, on a quick slot either. Once I have more spells and I have slots available, but for now I can of course just have it there. Uh, Call beast is also you know a thing that I, if at all, I'm I'm going to cast that once per combat. So. I'd, don't need that on a quick slot either, not necessarily. Minor heal I obviously want. Uh, curing I obviously want also. Smite, uh, actually, I guess for consistency, consistency's sake, I want uh, my attack magic there. I'm gonna put my healing there. Uh, curing, yes, protection. That's something I definitely want hotkeyed. Um, because I might need to buff that several times per combat. Okay. Um, you guys... Oh, so you don't get to actually look at combat disciplines at all. But, of course, we can... No? Right, we can look at battle disciplines like this, but it doesn't tell us anything about the requirements. Okay, that's fine. I think that's pretty much as it was in the previous games as well. Oh, okay, can't get there. Now we can. When you travel up to the surface, you are likely to be attacked by hostile soldiers and beasts. Like those uh, I can see there, a spider and a bat. Mm -hmm. Before you are allowed above, Avernum wants to make sure you can handle it. That is why just ahead several beasts have thoughtfully been left here for you. Once they are destroyed, Avernum will be confident in your abilities. You're about to enter combat mode. Yep, okay. How to attack. Right. I mean, I expect this to be exactly the same. Oh, 
This is so nice. Yeah, one of the um, most apparent improvements, interfa interface and you know just general uh, quality of life improvements, is that you can now see exactly where your character is going to walk. That is so helpful. Um, it does not indicate that you're going to be stopped by an enemy, though, which will happen when you walk into and try to walk out of their melee range. Um, yeah, unfortunately, we're too far away to really attack, attack the enemies from here, but... Um, We can just wait for them to come. Okay. Attack. Um, well, maybe I shouldn't have positioned myself the way I did, but that's okay. I could summon something now. <laughs> Actually, ironically, my summoner, or, you know, who I intend to become a summoner, can't actually summon anything yet. In fact, um, Summon Shade. Yeah, I mean, um, actually a mage would be better as a pure summoner, wouldn't they? Hmm. Didn't really think that through, did I? But I also don't want my mage to... You know, I, I want a mage. I could go with two mages, I suppose. One focusing on summoning, but that doesn't really work. Ah. Well, I don't know. I, I mean, uh, priests do have some summoning spells, right? Uh, in fact, well, they have summon shade and they have divine hose. I thought they had a third one, but maybe not. Yeah, yeah, wounded character, whatever. Um, the mage has more options. Hmm, I don't know. I guess there's still some wiggle room left. We haven't really, uh, haven't really determined um, or committed. To too many points yet to uh, still make some changes. Let's see. I could heal, sure, but uh, I think we'd want to focus on just killing this thing. Oh, okay. And it's dead. That was my test, really? That was the final test? Since both of the subterranean horrors left for you have been squished, the gates to the north open. Agents from unspecified services hurry through, eager to throw you into a teleporter and send you to Upper Avernum. I thought that's where we are already. Uh, from there, you will at last be able to step out onto the surface. Okay. Well, it hasn't happened yet, so I'm going to pick those up. Oh, I instinctively uh, put them in my junk bag. Because they are worth 25. Let's see here. Uh, most food in Avernum is disgusting, bordering on the inedible. The opportunity to get decent edible goods on the surface goes a long way to justify taking the risk of going up there. Okay. But this is... Disgusting stuff from Avernum, of course. It's also worth some money. Oh, there we are. You were teleported to Upper Avernum and sent to Fort Emergence just below the surface. Here, your final training began. Oh, so we're not done training yet. You were told about life on the surface. This is what sunlight feels like. Ow. It burns. It was terrifying. No doubt. Your briefing was extensive. This... Is a tree. Is a tree! Huh? A what now? What's it for? <laughs> and confusing. At last, you were declared ready. You're to go see someone named Anaximander to get your orders and leave for the service. All of Vernum waits on you. They hunger for the sunlight. You carry the dreams of your people. Good luck. Oh, that's a lot of responsibility. Okay, this, this is where the game actually begins. Ah, I see. So, even though we had this quest before, it was actually really uh, referring to this point in time. Because, yes, there is an Examander note. The an Examander note. Alright, a tunic gives some armor. Uh, actually, we did start with better armor, though. So, never mind. Boots, however are nice. Uh, crude javelins, um, sure. I guess I'll give them to my archer. <laughs> Although they don't benefit from the uh, missile weapon traits that I've given him. 
Uh, oops. Um, how do you not with? Uh oh. Settings. Keyboard shortcuts. Um, inventory. Oh, with G. Right. Yeah, I I guess I knew that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Derp. Oh, my office. You. Oh, okay. My next and minus office is over there. Side storeroom supplies for you here. Caves to surface. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is a simple map of the northern half of Fort Emergence. On the back it says, pick up your supplies and come see me as soon as possible, an examander. Alright, as soon as possible may not be as soon as an examander would like us to visit him, but uh, soon enough. Okay. Uh, I mean, assuming there still isn't a need to actually eat food, I'm just going to keep all this for selling. You step out of your quarters and into one of the many cavernous halls of Fort Emergence. The corridors are eerily quiet. Only a small fraction of the troops that will be stationed here have arrived yet. It's time to find an examander and get your orders. Happily, someone left a map on the table in your quarters. Yep, I know. Okay, so this is where we start out. Uh, this is, should be where an examander is. This is where it should go to the surface. And so on and so forth. Seems pretty straightforward. Uh, right, okay. So tab still displays people and, well, not really items, no. but people's names. That's already helpful. Right. As I said, it's been a while since I played the previous game, so I'm, I'll have to rely on a combination of muscle memory and uh, remembering uh, how things work. But yeah, so you basically hit G to look for pickups uh, or pickable up items in your vicinity. Oh, okay, these are not for me to take, except for this plate and this knife, if I want to. Let's talk to Gordon, our first NPC. You meet a young, scrawny man with short, sandy brown hair. He's cleaning this meal hall, occasionally pausing to gnaw at a piece of venison jerky. Real meat, forged from the surface. We don't have anything like this below. He nods respectfully as you join him. Greetings to you, adventurer. I'm Gordon. Exactly what is, uh, what is it you do? Well, I'm sort of the servant for the guest quarters. I sort of keep everything clean, prepare meals, that sort of thing. Sort of. Uh, why would the guests get their own servant? I mean, why not? Well, when important guests such as yourselves come, they expect to be treated well, with as much luxury as we can summon. That sort of thing. Unfortunately, there's one problem. Um, that problem would be? Well, we're trying to get the fort ready for all the troops that will eventually be here. Unfortunately, we're not totally ready yet. He looks scared. Please don't try to uh, don't try to get me into trouble. It's not my fault if anything goes wrong. I just sweep. Sure. Um, I thought you just said you're responsible for the guest quarters. Yes, and this is my main responsibility. He grabs a broom and sweeps a little by way of demonstration. Okay. Um. So I'm an important guest. He looks at you as if you are terribly important. You're the most important guest we've had yet. Why, you're going to be one of the first explorers to seriously look around on the surface. He says without irony, I really envy you. Huh, I suppose that I am very unfortunate. Kind of. To go out to the surface, and maybe even survive. What I would give to be you. But uh, be sure to come back and tell me what it's like. Sure, I'm. most of all I'm going to make sure to try and survive. Um, right. Can I help you with anything else, adventurer? I'm at your service. Uh, do you know where I can find supplies? Oh, that reminds me, I was supposed to tell you. There is a storeroom to the west, south of an examander's office. There's a side room there with a bunch of stuff for you. Where can I find him? Leave the guest quarters and go across the main central cave to the west. The important people all have their offices in the northwest corner. Okay, thanks. Well, we knew all of that from our map and letter, but... Oh. You enter the Fort Emergence Training Hall. You can come here when you want to improve your adventuring skills. The trainer, Jan Mitho, is keeping in shape in the battle pit. Okay, hello Jan Mitho. I mean, that's probably not going to be for free, so... Um, probably not going to do much training for now. Aha, uh -huh. crude longbow. That's better. I mean, these are still worth nothing. Unsellable. Uh, I guess I'll give those to my shaman. For now. 
A young, lithe woman moves gracefully in the center of the room, performing various martial exercises. A vicious curved sword is sheathed at her side. When you approach, she gives you a stiff bow. Uh, she gives you a stiff bow. No, I already picked that up. Huh. Uh, apologies. Just keeping in shape until more soldiers arrive for training. Welcome. I'm Jan Mitho, the trainer for Fort Emergence. I mean, shouldn't we already know you? Uh, who do you train? I'm here to train elite soldiers, helping them perfect their skills for the most dangerous missions. I can also train... others. She says, others, with mild disdain. You can't help but guess her contempt is aimed at you. Hmm. I mean, wouldn't we be the elite? Or rather, wouldn't they send their most elite troops to do... You know, this... To go on this... Super important mission that we're being sent on? Hmm... Uh, do you have some problem with me? You work for unspecified services, do you not? I am not afraid to say I have little respect for your lot. Um, well, sorry. We're all fighting the same enemy, though. Ha, <laughs> she spits. Unspecified services is a ragtag band of untrained adventurers, amateur spies, and mixed hangers-on. We soldiers train hard and, and die for our cause. You wander around aimlessly and expect respect. <laughs> and yet King Micah gives the first contact with the surface to, you, to your undis undisciplined lot. She spits again. Well, yeah. Again, sorry, but it's really hardly our fault. King Micah is a wise ruler, and I will not tolerate any insults to, of our sovereign. Hmm. I mean... Uh, yeah, I don't know. Let's just talk about something else. <laughs> Gladly. Um, I would like some basic training. Oh, okay. This is actually almost affordable. Um, well... I mean, we can literally afford this one thing. Call Beast. I didn't expect her to be a mage trainer, really. But, um, sure, let's buy that. I can s sell some stuff, and of course, there will be some supplies to pick up. What's advanced training, though? I'm under orders to train you to the best of my ability, but only when I find you ready. You aren't yet. Go out onto the surface and prove yourself worthy of my aid. Fair enough. Yeah, I really was expecting some combat training and not mage training, but... I'll take it. Oh, leather pants. These are worth money. Also, actually better than no pants at all. As usual, I'm not going to be stealing random stuff unless it immediately aids me. Oh, difficulty 5. Okay, well. It's gonna take us a while to get there, be able to to open that. Uh, I should make a note about that, probably. Uh, you leave the guest quarters and begin your exploration of Fort Emergence. Everything is new, and all of the construction was done very quickly. You hope that a ceiling doesn't collapse on you when getting breakfast. You work for unspecified services, and your commander and ex-commander is somewhere off to the west. A first step of a long journey. The first step of a long journey. This might be a good time to save the game. Uh, yes, actually, I haven't done that yet. Good point. These barracks are still pristinely clean and completely unused. No soldiers have been um, brought up to fill them yet. But it probably will happen soon. Alright. Uh, tongues? Oh. Worth money. Might also be necessary for some kind of quest, but... I'm just gonna try and make some cash for now. Hello, cat. Meow. These barracks are incomplete. The floor and wall in the corner aren't yet done and some of the furniture is still on the way. Soon, though, this chamber will be completed and filled with anxious Evernight soldiers. Indeed. Oh. Uh, hammers aren't worth anything. Stone blocks aren't worth anything. Hmm. I mean, I could preemptively start picking up some random tools in anticipation of um, any collection quests I might get, but eh. Let's not be too paranoid about that. Officers of the Majory, violators will be towed. Will be towed? <laughs> okay. You enter the main Fort Emergence... Uh, the main Fort Emergence Laboratory. Here, specimens from the surface world are brought to be carefully examined. Evernights have forgotten much about the flora and fauna of the surface. Well, forgotten much or never, knew, never known it in the first place, because most were born underground at this point. Um, yeah, and it all needs to be relearned. In addition... Alchemical herbs are being grown in long stone pots at the east end of the chamber. 
They are then made into potions to be given to, to soldiers stationed here to eat them in case of an empire attack. All right. Hello, Mazumdar. Mazumdar. We go here. Apparently. A lit brazier and buckets of water keep this room hot and humid. The moist air is full of the rich, strange smell of live plants. To the north, you see a wide variety of surface flora, neatly organized and ready for careful study by the fort mages. I mean, would, the, would that flora not still need uh, sunlight to actually grow? When you step on the rune, a misty cloud of liquid shoots out of a hole in the ceiling. It envelops you and makes your skin sting and your eyes water. Then it dissipates. This must be some sort of magical cleaner to be used in case of lab accidents. Oh, okay. Well, good thing we didn't take damage from that, but I guess we're thoroughly... Um, thoroughly disinfected now. Bera. Let's see here. Oh, right. Could have gone through this door as well. Uh, sure, let's talk to her. Oh, him, actually. You meet a small, bent wizard, heavy with years. He is sitting at, at his desk, poring over a thick book, researching esoteric topics you could never begin to comprehend. Uh, rude. You clear your throat to get his attention. He squints up at you and croaks, I am Bera. I hope you are not here to waste my time. Uh, what are you working on? I mainly concern myself with doing research. If only the facilities here were adequate. How are the facilities lacking? He croaks in irritation. Now, if I was at the Tower of Magi, I would have all the tomes and materials I need, but here I have little to work with. What is the Tower of Magi like? The Tower of Magi is the center of magical learning in Avernum. Oh, what I would give to be there. The research I could perform. Hmm, okay. Um, can you give me magical training? <laughs> he looks at you with confusion, then shock, then anger. Do I look like some teacher? Some professor? Some guide for mere adventurers? The training hall is to the north. Bother them and leave me in peace. Why are you so rude? Aren't we all in this together? Apparently not. Apparently not. Well, okay, that was... Uh, a pleasant little exchange. Hello, Mazumdar. This woman is quite young, probably in her mid-twenties. Yet she radiates power and authority well beyond her years. She levels a piercing gaze at you. I am Mazumdar, head mage of Fort Emergence. She's carrying a pot in her hands. It contains an actual surface flower. Wow. Um, so, what do you do here, exactly? I coordinate all magical activities that take place in Fort Emergence. Why is that important? Coordination is very important. If two mages attempt conflicting spells simultaneously in close quarters, it can... She draws her finger across her throat in a slitting sort of motion. Okay. What sorts of magical activities go on here? Little, for now. We are hiding from the Empire. Concealment spells and research, mainly. This fort will eventually be used for experimentation, training, and launching magical spells against your foes. Our foes. However, the Triad keeps us from being nearly as powerful as we could be. What is the Triad... What is the Triad, and why are they interfering? The Triad consists of the three greatest mages of Avernum, based in the Tower of Magi. They are in charge of all things magical. Unfortunately, they tend to not want to let power out of their control. Um, that makes sense, I guess. For that reason, our resources are nowhere near what they could be. She grins. With exceptions. Exceptions such as... We are supposed to be training mages here, yet the Triad won't let us have the, look, have the books to teach spells from. She grins mischievously. However, we've managed to sneak a few things past them. We need those tomes, after all. That sounds interesting. May I read some of your tomes? Mazumdar thinks, and then slowly shakes her head. I'm sorry, but it is too much of a risk to say more about what we have here. If certain things were known, it would cause us great trouble. I don't think we can trust you yet. Okay, but eventually you will be able to trust us. Good to know. Um, you're doing research with surface plants? Why, of course. When the first group went out to explore the surface, they came back with surface plants, surface animals, dirt, all, all sorts of things for us. Uh, what sort of plant are you holding? I'm told that it was called a dandelion, something like that. It is very strange, but the more we relearn re about surface ways, the better we will understand what it does. Um, why do you need to research things on the surface? Uh, because... Well, remember, it has been years since the last people were sent to Avernum. For years, all any of us have known about the surface came from books or hazy memories. I was born in Avernum. I've only spent a few hours outside getting samples. So this laboratory is engaged in the act of relearning. 
We need to rediscover knowledge people on the surface take for granted. Can you make potions? Alas, nobody in Fort Emergence can brew potions. This is an oversight that desperately needs to be corrected. Hmm. Can you teach me magical spells? I'm sorry, I think Yanmitho and Eva can uh, give that sort of training. Talk to them. Uh, presum presumably Eva is going to be the uh, priest trainer then. Okay, well, thanks. You were much friendlier to talk to. Is this another one of these? The corridor here is blocked by a magical wall. It's a cube of faint, glowing energy and seems at first to be insubstantial. However, you know very well with misleading how misleading appearances can be when dealing with magical matters. You touch the barrier lightly. It throws your hand back with daunting force. Your wrist is slightly sprained. You back away quickly before something worse happens. Oh. Referring to this, not that rune on the ground. Okay, well. Of course we know all about magical barriers from the previous games. This chamber is thick with the raw stink of animal feed and fresh dung. Mm. There are cells ringing the room, several of which hold strange creatures from the surface world. They must be here for study. Will we actually see a whole bunch of new sprites, new animals, new enemies in general? I mean, that would be expected, right? With a whole new world for us to explore. Well, we have we had cows on the uh, down in the caves. Sheep? I don't remember seeing. And this is just more sheep. Okay. Uh, who are you? Eva? Oh, you're Eva. This young woman's robes were probably clean this morning. Now they have bits of fur and tiny clumps of dung on them. Hmm. She curtsies you, self-consciously brushing fur and such off her robe as she does so. I'm Eva. I am of the Church of the Seeking Soul. We obtain knowledge and then we share it. Okay. What sort of work are you doing? I'm here to research the flora and fauna of the surface world. Spies brought some samples back. We can also magically summon samples from the surface world, examine them in their cells, and teleport them back up. And if they are damaged, I heal them. What is this flora of which you speak? You know... What is this flora of which you speak? You know, plants? If you find any unusual creatures on the surface, ask me about them. Maybe I'll know something. What is fauna? Animals. If you find any unusual creatures on the surface, ask me about them. Okay. Uh, why do you use teleportation to gather your specimens? I mean, it seems pretty convenient to me. It's a difficult technique, but remember, we need to stay hidden from the Empire as long as possible. Okay, do you have anything in the cells now? There are some interesting samples in there right now. Please don't let them out. Okay, I'll try to constrain myself. Uh, Eva continues to pick at the dirt on her robe. I can spare some more time from, from my research. What would you like to speak of? You notice that her skin is translucent and her hair is prematurely graying. Reliable signs that she was born in Avernum. Hmm. I'd like to learn more about the life of the surface world. I'm under orders to help you. I have learned about the fierce monsters of the outside, like the wolf and the bear. Okay. Um, <laughs> what is that round white furry thing in the north cell? The surface people call it a sheep. It is a very stupid surface meat creature. Oh, that's a rude thing to say. Uh, tell me about bears and wolves. Surface carnivores. They'll take a bite out of you if they get the chance. They make even. They may even be full of unspeakable evil. Hmm. Have you done any research on research on wolves? Wolves are occasionally vicious, furry creatures, slightly smaller and less dangerous than giant lizards. Beware wargs, though. A warg is a type of wolf, bred for huge size, ill temper, and a dim, malevolent intelligence. What have you learned about bears? They are large and potentially dangerous, although usually they would be more than happy to just leave you alone. You should, however, beware of the Ursagi. The Ursagi are a sort of intelligent mutant bear. They are very evil. We captured one, and it almost picked the lock of its cell with its claw. It would have been a horrible mess if it had escaped. Wow, okay. Um, can I learn more about your holy rituals? Oh, I, indeed I can. Uh, I could if I had more money. So I could improve my healing here. Good to know. Although we should be fine for now. Oh, thanks. Oh. Limbs, huh? Who did they belong to? Maybe I don't want to know. Uh, should I? <laughs> I obviously shouldn't. I don't know if I can. Oh! I totally can. Whoops. Ah. Can I reclose this? 
Nope. Hmm. Is there any practical purpose to opening these? Not really. Oh. <laughs> I was not really thinking. I wasn't planning to open this cell, but here I am. Um, really, is there no reason to do this? No hidden switch? Nothing? Guess not. Well, sorry. Um, you'll, you'll be fine, I guess. It's just sheep and a cow, so... No one should be in too much danger. An iron dagger. Um, I mean, I'm probably going to find better upgrades, but I guess for now, I'll take that. I'll basically take anything that's... Uh, okay for me to take. Uh, actually... Um, I'll put this in, I'll put these herbs into my first character's inventory just for convenience. I think that's what I ended up doing in the previous game as well. The central gallery runs north-south through Fort Emergence. It is crowded with large carts and the giant lizards who pull them. Massive piles of supplies ship in and out of this fort. All of the settlements of Upper Avernum are still works in progress. Unfortunately, no, fortunately, you don't have to worry about assault from these giant lizards. Though the creatures are innately fierce and stupid, the merchants who own them constantly dull their teeth and claws. Right. Okay, no one to talk to around here. Oh, but there's one. Uh, okay. Habakar. You meet a a portly bearded man in nondescript robes. He wanders around the main gallery of the fort, clearly quite bored. Oh, hello. I'm Habaker. How are you? Uh, what job do you have here? Well, I was hired to do research for the fort, which is why I'm so bored. Um, what sort of research? I'm a sage by trade. I was brought here to gather and study samples from the surface world. That's why being here is so boring. If only I could find someone interested in my abilities. He looks at you meaningfully. Uh, are you bored because you have nothing to study? Yes, I came here to study things from the surface world. However, they won't let me go up there to study. So I spent my time down here, wandering back and forth, waiting for permission to emerge. What interests you um, the most about the surface world? All the things to explore. All the amazing creatures we've forgotten about and need to rediscover. I hear they have a thing called a bird. Can you imagine? Hmm. Well, I guess we, we do have bats down in Avernum, so... We're technically familiar with flying creatures. What is this thing you call a bird? It flies, or breathes fire, or eats eyes, or something. I keep hearing different stories. I'll never know for sure until I get to the surface. Huh. I really hope I won't encounter birds that do more than just fly. <laughs> um, you have ropes. Are you a wizard? No, common mistake. I'm a sage. I just won't be able to do any of my work until they let me to the uh, let me go outside. Right, why won't they let you go to the surface? The powers that be are desperate to keep the Empire from learning the location of Fort Emergence. That is why only people from unspecified services, like you, are the only people let out. Uh, speaking of which, I'm supposed to meet someone named Anaximander. I've heard of him. Unspecified services, right? His offices are in the northwest corner of the fort. Right. Thanks. Well, I... For a second there, I thought he was going to give me a quest to specifically go look for something on the surface. But I guess not. Mm. I should also probably end this first episode soon, but I want to look around a bit more. Bags of milk. Thank you. Those will be put to a good service. To good use. I mean, Theresa. Theresa? Is that a character from... The earlier games, the name sounds familiar. You meet a young woman with long dark hair. She is walking around the main gallery of Fort Emergence in nervous circles. She seems to know who you are already, and she is uncomfortable when you approach. Um, hello, I'm Theresa. Uh, okay, you seem very uncomfortable. Why? Because we both work for unspecified services. The keyword is covert. We deal in secrets, and if I tell you things, those things are no longer secrets, and you might give them up. Nothing personal. Uh, you just can't be allowed to know what I know. But we're... If we're working for the same secret service... Never mind. Is that the only reason you're uncomfortable? Well, almost. Oh, actually, now I got a quest. Huh. 
You see, I was supposed to get a bundle of records from the portal fort. It was supposed to get here weeks ago, but there has been no sign of the courier. It's nothing crucial, but I really wish those papers would arrive. Maybe I could find them. Maybe. I wouldn't waste your time with it, though. Anyway, you should visit the portal fort sometimes. It can be useful. Leave the fort emergence to the south. Stick to the road. Follow the signs. The courier disappeared somewhere between here and there. Oh, so you are asking me to bring you those papers. Fair enough. Uh, so... Okay, I'm supposed to meet someone named Anaximander. Oh, our boss. I can help. That is easy. Enter the warehouse to the west. Go north from there. Our offices are there. Okay. Uh, what are your responsibilities? I'm with unspecified services, like you. Tell me what you know about uns unspecified services. Well, first, don't ask too many questions. She sighs. We are the department of spies, lone wolf mages, adventurers, and everyone else working for a vernum that isn't in the army. Also, the source of eternal resentment on the part of the military. Yep, learned that already. We both are on an assignment, are on assignment for unspecified services at the moment. Have you been informed of what we are to accomplish? Your job is to gather information on the surface. I am t the contact for the others being sent up here. Others beside you, that is. There are others being sent as well? Yes, others. You didn't think something so important would be left to just you, huh? She pauses. And more than that, I'm not clear to say. Sorry. She turns away. All right. Um, I mean, okay. I guess I'll grab a couple more of these. Why not? Anything that's free, I'll take. The sign says, Northern Gate. Warning beyond here lies surface. Authorized personnel only. I mean, that's us. But I guess not until we... Uh -huh. Hello there. Actually talk to this Anaximander. Uh, another crude longbow. Sure, I'll give her one as well. And one of these to our designated healer. Oh, there's yet another hidden switch as well. And another barrier. Okay, uh, primary supply depot. That's where we are supposed to grab uh, our supplies, I guess. Yeah. Uh, well, kind of. Specifically in that storeroom. Mm -hmm. Yep. Should be around, around here, according to that map. Um, oh, I actually have to hit OK to close that. Fair enough. Um, man, I... Okay. Uh, I want to keep exploring, but I will keep uh, try and keep these episodes around an hour long, as usual. So I'm just going to make a cut here, even though it's a bit arbitrary. And, um, yeah, we'll continue next episode. For the time being, I thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoy it and will continue to enjoy this new series. Uh, if you did enjoy this episode, please um, hit the like button, leave a comment, and I shall see you real soon. Bye-bye.